Welcome guys, in this video I'm going to take you through the process of refraction and some calculations associated with this process. So refraction can be seen as the bending of light after moving from one medium into another medium having different densities. So let's maybe come up with a picture so that we understand fully. So I'm going to use two media so one will be air then the other one will be a glass we know that the density of a glass is greater than that of air because the particles in a glass are closely packed compared to the particles of air so i'm going first to begin by drawing a vertical line which is in dotted this line is called the normal ray so always make sure it is in dotted if in case you are dot to draw one. So this is our normal ray and it's perpendicular to the surface, which means that an angle of 90 here is made and also here is made. Or we can say it divides the angle of 180, which is the straight line, into two angles. Now after doing that, let's show the incident ray. So the incident ray is the ray of light striking a medium. And we can tell by looking at the arrow. So whenever you see the arrow showing you that the ray of light is striking a medium, just remember that this is an incident ray. Now, as you can see, we have an angle between the incident ray and the normal ray, which is denoted by small letter i. So this is called the angle of incidence. So the difference between the two is that the ray is the, uh, uh, the incident, but the angle is the incidence. Now, in terms of the bending, are we expecting to have the bending of away from the normal ray or toward the, the normal ray? So what? you have to put into consideration is if the light is going into more denser or less denser. Now, since it's coming from air, which is less denser, into a glass, which is more denser, the bending will be that toward D, the normal. So we are expecting to have this kind of bending. So remember, when light moves from a lesser into a more denser, it is going to bend toward the normal. So we can see that it's coming toward the normal. So this ray is called refracted ray. Now the angle formed between the normal and the refracted ray is called the angle of refraction. Now what happens upon leaving the glass going back into its original medium so here i'm going to draw another normal ray but for this one we are going to consider it as light moving from a more denser into a less denser so this time the ray of light will move in the same direction as it started so as you can see we have the same direction now this a uh, ray of light coming out of this medium of a glass is called the emergent ray. So now, uh, for simple explanation, the angle of refraction will become the angle of incidence for the second refraction. So therefore, if there is an angle of 30, even here we are going to have angle of 30. Now, let's look at the uh, the refractive index for air so the refractive index for air is about one <coughs> excuse me then the refractive index of a glass is about 1.5 then air we have one so we can say that whenever light moves from an uh, of a refractive index of one into any number greater than one we are expected to have the bending of toward the normal ray. 
So this is what we can eh, look at eh, this point. Then eh, the other thing, if you look at eh, the angle, the relationship between eh, the angle of incidence eh, is greater than eh, the angle of refraction when eh, light moves into a more denser medium. Then eh, the reverse is also true if light moves into a less denser medium. You can see that this angle is greater than eh, this angle. Then for the first one, this angle is greater than uh, that angle. So that is what you need to know. Now, away from there, let's look at what we call the refractive index. So the refractive index in physics is denoted by small letter n. And refractive index can be defined as a measure of the speed of light for a particular medium. Or we can define this one as the ratio of the sine of the angle of incident, incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction. Now, the first formula to calculate the refractive index is where we can say refractive index is equal to C, the speed of light in a vacuum, divided by the speed of light for a particular medium. Now, the speed of light in a vacuum is 3 times 10 raised to the power 8 meters per second. So this formula can also be written as 3 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 8 meters per second over V, which means that the speed of light in a vacuum is constant. It's given. You just have to commit this number uh, to memory. So let's say we want to have an example, right? So let's say, how can we calculate uh, uh, let's say speed of light in water. So for you to find this, you need to find the refractive index of water. So let's look at uh, the refractive index of pure water. So for pure water is about 1.33. So if this is the speed of light for pure water, then I'm going to substitute where there is any, we can put 1.33. Now, if you look at this formula, so to make V the subject of formula, to find the speed of light for a particular medium is equal to C divided by N, or the speed of light in vacuum divided by its refractive index for that medium. So the speed of light is 3 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 8 over the refractive index of water is 1.33. Now, when dividing numbers like this, make sure you put them in parentheses. So I'm going to say uh, 3 times uh, 10 raised to the power 8 divided by 1.33. So I'm getting about uh, 2.25 times times 10 raised to the power 8 meters per second. So if we are to compare, we can see that the speed of light in a vacuum is greater than the speed of light in a glass, or light travel faster in a vacuum compared to a medium like a glass, water. And the reason is because in water, the particles are closer, are closely packed compared to the arrangement of particles in air. Now, what happens to, let's look at uh, in terms of uh, velocity and uh, wavelength. So, when the refractive index increases, the velocity will decrease, the speed will decrease, we have seen by calculations. Then what of the wavelength? The wavelength also will decrease which is the same as it will go down let's say we have an example like this one so let's say the wavelength of light in air is 500 nanometers how can we find the wavelength in a glass so remember the refractive index of a glass normal glass is about 1.5. Uh, 
So to find the refractive index, I mean the wavelength for a particular medium, you, used, you need to use this formula. You can say wavelength of that medium is equal to, you need to have wavelength of the actual medium, which is the vacuum in air, divided by the refractive index for that medium, which is, we can say, uh, wavelength for that medium is equal to the the wavelength for light in air is given as 500 nanometers divided by the refractive index which is 1.5 so let's look at the number that we're going to get so I'm going to say uh, 500 divided by 1.5 so I'm getting 333.3 nanometers. So we can see by calculations that the wavelength has decreased because in air it was 500, but in a glass is about 333.3. Now, what of uh, frequency? So in terms of uh, frequency, the frequency does not change and if you want we can show by calculations so to show by calculations we can use this formula so i'm going to say c which is the, <coughs> the speed of light in a vacuum is, is equal to wavelength then multiply by uh, the frequency so i'm going to find the frequency now the speed of light in a vacuum which is c is given by three times 10 raised to the power 8 meters per second now what is the wavelength in a vacuum we said this is the number that i'm going to use so if this is the number that i'm going to use where there is wavelength i'm going to put 500 now look at the units this one is in nanometers so we need to change into meters so when changing we can just say multiply by 10 raised to the power negative 9. So to find the frequency, you divide by 500 times 10 to the power negative 9. Also here, 500 times 10 to the power negative 9. So if we cancel, we can now get the, the frequency. So I'm going to say uh, 3 times 10 raised to the power 8 divided by 500 500 times 10 to the power negative 9. So I'm getting about 6 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 14 hertz. So this is the frequency of light in air. Now, what could be the frequency of light in a glass? So to find the frequency, of light in a glass you are going to use this formula where you need to say uh, velocity which is the speed of light in a vacuum is equal to uh, wavelength multiplied by frequency now to use this formula we need to find the, the speed the speed of light in a medium so let's do that so we say the, for us to find the speed of light in a medium, you use this formula. V is equal to uh, C divided by its refractive index. So V is equal to, what's our C? Is 3 times 10 raised to the power 8. Any, we are going to use the, the refractive index of a glass, which is 1.5. So divided by 1.5. So we can now read the calculator to do the work. So say 3 times 10 raised to the power 8 divided by 1.5. So I'm getting about uh, 2.0 times 10 raised to the power 8. So this is now the number that I'm going to use here. So I'm going to say 2 times 10 raised to the power 8 times. Now, we need to use the wavelength for the same medium so we found this so 
we put 3 point, I mean 333.3 times 10 raised to the power negative 9. We are changing to meters then. So let's do some math here. So frequency is equal to so I'm going to say 2 raised to the power 8 divided by 333.3 raised times 10 raised to the power negative 9. So according to my calculator, I'm getting the same answer. 6 times 10 raised to the power 14 hertz. So as we can see, the frequency does not change even if light moves from one medium into another so to summarize our work we are saying when light moves from one medium into another medium the speed changes and the wavelength changes so whenever the refractive index increases the speed decreases the wavelength also de uh, decreases but the frequency stays the same Right, let's have uh, another example, but this time let's now use the Snell's law. So the Snell's law is what tells us the ratio of the angle of the sine of incidency to the sine of the angle of refraction, which is given by this formula. Refractive index is equal to sine i divided by sine r. So to understand fully, I'm going to come up with a simple diagram. So this is our simple diagram. So I'm going to have three media this time. So this is air with the refractive index of one. This will be uh, a glass. A glass has the refractive index of 1.5. This will be diamond. Diamond has the refractive index of 2.4. So the first uh, point here will be. So we need to draw the normal ray. So we need to show the first part. So this is our first part here. And let's say we have the angle of incidence of 60 degrees. Then we have this refracted ray. So Upon moving from the glass into the diamond, since the densities are different, then we are expected to have another bending. So as we can see, this time now, it will bend almost toward the normal ray. So the question will be, we are going to find the theta, this theta, we we'll call this theta 1. Then we are going to find also this theta 2. So to find the theta 1, so this is the angle of refraction for the first refraction. So the first refraction is between air and the glass. So to find the, the angle of refraction, we are going to use this formula where we are going to say N is the angle of uh, I mean the refractive index for the glass. So where there is any, I'm going to put 1.5 is equal to sine. What's the angle of incidence? Is 60. This number here over sine r. So we have 1.5 sine r is equal to 1 times sine 60. 
is sine 60. We divide by 1.5, also 1.5. So sine R is equal to, so sine 60 divided by 1.5. So I'm getting 0 0.5. 5773502 so we need to shift the sign to the right side giving us r is equal to sign inverse of this number which is r is equal to so you press shift then sign answer so i'm getting 35.3 degrees so this is the angle here 35 Point three degrees. So that is the angle of refraction for the first refraction. Now remember, we said if we use the Z rule, this angle here is equal to this angle here. For the for the second refraction, thirty five point three becomes the angle of incidence for the second uh, refraction. So we can now find the theta. We can now find the second theta. So as you can see, it's very simple. All you have to do is you understand what is happening and also you commit the formulas to memory. Right, so we are going to find now to find the, the second angle of refraction, we are going to use the the refractive index for diamond which is 2.4 so I'm going to say n my n is uh, 2.4 is equal to sine 35.3 over sine r so we're going to have 2.4 times sine r is equal to 1 times sine 35.3 is sine 35.3 we divide by 2.4 also 2.4 so sine r is equal to sine 35.3 divided by 2.4 so I'm getting 0 0.240 and make sure that your calculator is in degree mode then I'm going to shift my sign to the right side giving a r is equal to sine of inverse of these numbers so you press shift on your calculator then sign answer I'm getting 13 0.9 degrees so this is the angle here so uh, what can we deduce from the information that we are we have here so we can see that uh, the first one uh, light was moving from a medium of refractive index of one the next the medium was 1.5 then 2.4 so we can see that the refractive index is increasing from 1 to 1.5 up to 2.4 so as the refractive index is uh, increasing the angle of refraction is decreasing so at first the angle of refraction gave us 35.3 the second 19 i mean 13.9 so that is what we need to know about it the snails law let's move on to the next we can also find the, the refractive index using the real depth divided by the apparent depth so for this one happens when you put an object in water where you are going to see and the image of that object will, will be seen above compared to its actual 
position. Let me see if I can come up with a simple diagram. So let's say we have water. And I'm going to do the same to draw the normal. Rate. So let's say we have this is the actual image of a fish in water. Then the observer is somewhere here. So this is the observer. So uh, if you look at uh, the appearance or the image of the fish the image of the fish the image of the fish will appear on top of the actual image so let me draw the dotted so this is where the image of the fish will be seen but remember the actual image is here I mean the actual object is here so this is our observer so now how do you consider the two distances so the real depth is measured from the surface of water up to where the actual object is so this is it where the fish is so this distance is considered to be the real depth then the apparent depth is the depth from the surface of water to where the image is and the apparent depth is always smaller than the real depth because the image which is the apparent image will always appear on top of the actual object now, the apparent depth is defined as the depth of an object in water, which appears to be real, but in actual sense, it's not. Let's say the apparent depth is uh, 7.2 centimeters. Then uh, for real depth, let's say we have 9.6 centimeters. Then they ask us to find the refractive index of water. So I'm going to say refractive index of water is equal to the real depth is 9.6 divided by apparent depth is 7.2. So you can just go on your calculator. So you say 9.6 divided by 7.2. So I'm, going, I'm getting 1.333. So this is the final answer. So to summarize our work, we can use the real and upper and depth to find refractive index. Or given the refractive index and the upper and depth, you can find the real depth or vice versa. Now let's move on to the last part. So the last part is where we have the critical angle. So when do we have the critical angle so let's come up with a simple diagram so this time for for us to have this observation we are going to look at when light is moving from a more denser into a less denser which is it for example we say this is water then this is air so let me draw the first here This is our normal ray. So remember, what happens if light moves from a more denser medium into a less denser medium? So we are going to have the bending away from the normal. So this is the angle of incidence, then the angle of refraction. Now, I'm going to make another diagram, but this time, let's say we move a bit 
this angle of, I mean the incident here is shift to the left a bit so when it shifts to the left a bit we are going to reach a point where the angle of refraction is equal to the angle of I mean 90 degrees so let me try to use a different color so when the angle of refraction is equal to 90 whenever you get the angle of refraction equal to 90 then the angle of incidence here what you have is what we call the critical angle so the critical angle is formed when the angle of refraction is equal to 90 so that's when we we have that now the last one here we are going to come up with uh, total internal reflection so the total internal reflection can happen when the angle of incidence exceeds the angle of I mean the critical angle so at this point we have the angle of incidence then here the angle of reflection so if you have understood the point look at this at, at first the incident ray is closer to the normal ray then we have the normal refraction the bending away from the normal ray then we've moved this at first it was somewhere here so when you move the incident ray you reach at a point where this angle is equal to 90 degrees whenever the angle of refraction equals to 90 degrees then the angle of incidence the angle that you have formed here is the critical angle so the formula for critical angle let's say if you want to find the, the refractive index given the critical angle is equal to this one sine uh, we'll say 1 your sine 90 is it? so we'll just say 1 over sine of critical angle then if you want to let's say critical angle this will be critical angle is equal to sine of inverse of 1 over the refractive index for example we know that the refractive index of water is 1.33 so to find the effective, I mean, the critical angle of water will be sine inverse is equal to 1 over 1.33. So if we say shift sine, then we open bracket 1 divided by 1. 1 divided by 1.33. So I'm getting 48.80 degrees. So this is the critical angle. So as you can see, this is very simple. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.